Welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com. All children need two parents in their lives, even if their parents are divorced. This concept of the importance of shared parenting is not lost on Washington State Senator Jim Kastama, who is a, known as the Washington legislator's leading advocate for shared parenting. Senator Kastama also recently announced he is running for Secretary of State in Washington. He also was invited on stage at a Blue October concert in Seattle, drumming up support with the crowd uh, to allow divorced dads more access to their children. So we'll talk to him a little bit about that experience as well. Now you can learn more about Jim and his efforts for shared parenting by visiting his website, jimkastama.com. So Jim, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Well, thanks, Matt. I, um, I'm very glad to be here today. I appreciate you having me on. So as mentioned, you're one of the leading advocates for shared parenting. So let's talk about what have you done, what have your efforts been like uh, to promote shared parenting within Washington? Well, um, I was elected to the Washington State Legislature in 1996. And in fact, this was the driving issue for me to run for office. I had personally experienced a divorce and had gone through the proceedings had been deemed an excellent father and therefore was given in Washington State every other weekend and an evening a week with my, my kids. And I just found that, uh, quite frankly, I found it unbelievable. And so I went to the legislature and I went ahead and advocated for shared parenting. I have run, every year I have run a piece of legislation that has um, tried to put in place a rebuttable presumption for shared parenting. And the way we've defined it in the proposals that I put forward is shared parenting in at least one-third residential time with one parent. And, again, that's at least one-third. Yeah. So that um, at least you're assured of what most psychologists agree is a minimum time necessary to maintain that strong nurturing bond between a parent and a child. Um, so I've pushed for that legislation, and it's taken – a variety of forms. One has been the one parent time. Others have been just a rebuttable presumption for shared parenting to leave it up to the discretion of the courts. I have tried a lot of variations. So, Jim, I wanted to ask you about these roadblocks you're running into uh, from getting these bills passed. It just seems so incredible to many of the divorce dads out there watching it that people are opposed to them having just as equal of a right to see their children as the mother of their children. It just seems inherently unfair to fathers. So what is the opposition's viewpoint on this? Why, why is there such a problem getting shared parenting legislation passed? Well, I think there are, there are many factors. Um, I think on the, on the one hand, you have people who sincerely believe that children, um, because of stability, should be with one parent um, the majority of the time and the other parent just, uh, again, on weekends or um, very infrequently. Um, I mean, they do like to say it's frequent, but the reality is every other weekend is not frequent. Right. And I think there's that argument uh, to be made. I think what they mistake in the mistake in that argument is is they view physical stability as being more, more important than emotional stability. And I think what we know and what most psychologists know is that, you know, you need that other parent in your life to provide emotional stability. And for a long-term relationship, having that connection at an early age, um, I've known some people who were um, kept from their father at a very young age, and when they got older, they tried to reconnect with their father, but there was just something missing there. There had been too much time had gone by and they had missed those very key bonding years. So I think the system really misses out on that. Mm -hmm. um, I think an another reason is, is that this stereotype of a man, it's a holdover from the 1950s. Right. The idea that a, a, a father is the breadwinner, is the one who provides the income and the mother is the nurturer. It was, um, it, at that time, I mean, that's kind of how things were set up and were a holdover from that. In other words, the mother, the primary caregiver is the most important father doesn't see the child anyway uh, that often, so we'll just have him there every other weekend. It's a very stereotypical old model that, um, that, that frankly, I think is, is, is very inappropriate. But here's the problem, is that um, you have a lot of people, I would consider on the very, very far left, who look upon this issue as a gender issue. 
between men and women. Not about a, ch not a child's issue, but a gender issue. Um, the chair of the Judiciary Committee once told me, in fact, this family law is women's law, which I w was really taken aback by. Right. But anyway, so you have that idea that's kind of a, a gender dispute. And then you combine that with what I would say on the far right spectrum, this old traditional idea of a man being the breadwinner. And again, I don't mean to be stereotypical as far as, as, far as political spectrum and the perspectives there, but nevertheless, that's see it, how I see it playing out. And those of us in the middle who realize there has to be balance, that both people are equally valid, both parents are equally valid, there's really nobody in the political fight fighting for us very few people in that center. And um, a lot of fathers, frankly, who go through this, the, when they're through with it, when they have, um, they're done with the dispute, the really last thing they want to do is in, get back into it and kind of re-explore all the emotional uh, heartache, all the troubles they went through. So getting people to be activated in this is, is not as easy as you think. Um, and I would also say the third thing is that the legal system is really set up right now for this. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a huge presumption in the system for every other weekend or this very restrictive um, visitation arrangement. And when you go to your attorney, the attorney will say, well, you know, you could try to ask for more, but this is what you're, uh, this is what you're likely to get. This right. is what everyone else gets. And when you look at the extent of all of that, most people just say, okay, rather than the huge expense that they're going to pay, um, they'll go ahead and acquiesce to this presumption that's already out there. Uh, it's been said in Washington State, I remember when I first started uh, in 1996 in the legislature, a judge who was very supportive of me told the governor, said, the only way you can get more than every other weekend in Washington State is you have to mount a legal battle. And at that time, the judge said, at minimum of $25,000. Wow. And you can double that now. Yeah. Uh, easily, you can double that. And how many people out there have that kind of money, especially going through a divorce to fight for uh, visitation for their child? Exactly. So uh, those are three, I think, very, very potent, strong elements uh, that have really made it very difficult to get this through. Well, let's get into your partnership with Blue October. As mentioned in the intro, you were... Uh, you got on stage at this rock concert. The crowd's a younger demographic. Uh, you gave a speech advocating for shared parenting, and the reaction, the crowd seemed very supportive. I mean, were you surprised by that reaction? What was it like being on stage at this? Well, you know, Matt, let me tell you. I have been viewing out there the fact that 40% of all of our children grew up without fathers. In the African-American community, I believe it's like 70 to 73%. Uh -huh. And I, I think that there, um, there actually have been articles written about this rage that a lot of young people have. Um, a lot of it, I think, is because uh, maybe the generation before them has put so much of a focus on money being important that money has taken center stage and not their relationship with their parents. And so I guess what I was struck at the Blue October concert was this. I felt it's great finally someone out there realizes the, the pain that this system has caused. Finally, people out there, our youth, understand that they've been denied a relationship. And it wasn't just because of what people told them that someone didn't care for them. But there really is a system out there that has driven one of the people that could have been there for them all along driven them away. Jim, thank you very much for joining me and good luck not only in your uh, continued advocacy for shared parenting but also in your race for Secretary of State. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate this interview um, anytime. I really enjoy talking with you. Thank you. That was State Senator Jim Kastama. You can learn more about him and his efforts for shared parenting by visiting his website, jimkastama.com. That'll do it for this edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com.